What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser and I'm now a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London. In today's video, I'm gonna be studying and preparing for my upcoming OSCE exams here in medical school. So those are objective structured clinical exams and I'm gonna be using this book here to do it. I'm using this book because it was recommended to me by a bunch of older years. They said it's very, very helpful and I can completely agree. I've been going through it for a couple of days now and I think it's fantastic. I've recently come to a bit of a crazy realization. So let me tell you guys about that. My two big upcoming exams in May and June, one is a written exam, so a normal multiple choice test, and the other one is an OSCE exam. Those two exams count for 50% of my entire time in medical school. So how I'm breaking this down every day is that I'm still studying in my four hour blocks. I'm spending two hours in the morning working on OSCE related things. The OSCE exam is broken down into many subsections. There's communication stations, there's actual exam stations, clinical procedures, explaining of diseases, etc., etc. And then I'm spending another two hours going through practice paper questions on my computer using Notion and Past Medicine, as you guys will have seen in a previous video linked up over here. And all right, guys, that's pretty much it. I've got my coffee and I'm good to go. And now because I've already made this schedule, I don't have a difficult time about figuring out what it is that I need to do because I've already told myself what I need to do. So I look at my schedule and it says that today I'm going to be studying Vivas or Vivas from my OSCE book. So I'm going to turn to that chapter and continue where I left off last time. Pro tip, if you're having difficulty starting studying or starting a studying session, always decide what you're going to do before you actually sit down. So that when you sit down, there's nothing to think about. There's no like deliberating process. You just sit down and you're already being told what you need to study. All right, so I'm gonna whip out my thousand colored pens because everybody knows you need a thousand colored pens in order to start studying and be productive. I'm gonna get started with pulmonary fibrosis. I'm gonna do this for an hour. And then for the second hour of my two hour session focused on OSCEs, I'm gonna focus on examinations. And I have something interesting to show you guys with that. So we'll get to that in a bit. All right, so I've just finished going through two sections and I thought it might be interesting to show you guys how it is that I annotate these pages and what my thought process are as I go through them. So here's a bit of an overview of what my note taking looks like. Most of this is just repetition of what is already written down. I do a lot of things like over here, write down sort of silly ways to remember the thing that I'm trying to memorize. For example, the ways that I remember the causes of upper zone fibrosis, they're all the things that I would naturally think of as being lower or down towards the ground. So for example, silica and coal are found down towards the ground. And closing spondylitis causes lower back pain, so low towards the ground. Radiation comes from the Earth's core, so low towards the ground. So all these things that are low, 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 low cause upper zone fibrosis. And so anyways, it's kind of just more and more of that. I go through all the different notes and I try and write down and recall as many things as I can from memory. I try and rewrite the information that's already there from my memory to see if I know it. Step one, step two, step three. The color coding system is not as strict as it used to be back in the day, but I still use different colors for different things to help me memorize information. All right, hope that was useful. I'm gonna continue on with this until that first hour is over and I'll catch up with you guys after that. All right, so the second thing that I wanna do for OSCE practice today is clinical examinations. Now, usually without coronavirus, I would be meeting up with some of my friends and we would be practicing these examinations on each other in person. But since I can't do that, I've come up with an alternative, which is this guy over here. So this is a hedgehog that I won maybe two years ago at a huge festival in London called Winter Wonderland. And it's basically been collecting dust for a long time waiting for OSCE practice. So finally, his time has come. He's about to be useful, finally. And so basically, instead of practicing my examinations on another human, since I don't have one, I can practice my examinations on this hedgehog. And I can listen to his heart in all the different places that I need to. I can auscultate his lungs for equal and bilateral air entry. I can listen to his bases, etc. You guys get the idea. So I actually got this idea from Rachel Southard. She uses a Winnie the Pooh like toy to practice her Oskis on. I think it's a fantastic idea. Now I actually haven't named this hedgehog. So I'm gonna let you guys name it. So leave a comment down below saying what we should name this guy. And you're probably gonna see him in future videos as well. Anyways, for now, I'm gonna throw him on the bed. I'm gonna take this off and prepare for the exam. So the exam that I'm gonna prepare for today is the abdominal exam. Now that hedgehog over there doesn't have much of an abdomen, so I don't think it's gonna be very easy, but we can use it as a general replacement for a human for this. All right, so that's all the reading done and the theory prepped for. Now what's left to do is to actually examine Mr. Hedgehog over there. I'm going to put this out of sight so I can't cheat. Let's put this here. 
All right, so usually for our exams, we have six minutes to do these examinations. I'm gonna set it anyway, just to get a general sense of the time. All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Nasser Karma. I'm one of the fourth year medical students here on the board today. Could I please confirm your name and date of birth? Fantastic, thank you. So today what I've been asked to do is come and do an abdominal exam on you or a tummy exam. What this is gonna involve is me having a look, listen and feel of your hands, your arms, your face, and then your tummy area as well. Would that be okay with you? Perfect, thank you. Or before we start, is it okay if I explain what I'm doing to my colleague here, uh, my examiner? Perfect, thank you. Can I ask you to hold up your hands like this, straight ahead, and then cock your wrists back and just hold them there, please? Thank you very much, Mr. Hedgehog. That brings us to the end of the exam. I'm gonna sit you back up in your chair. Good timing. I'm gonna sit you back up in your chair and you can get dressed now. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? No, okay, thank you for your time. Hand gel and scrub out. Woo! <laughs> I know that probably looked crazy. You guys probably think I'm crazy, but it's very, very helpful to actually practice those things out. Because imagine, without Mr. Hedgehog, what would I be doing? I'd be talking to my chair and I would just do what? Pretend to palpate an abdomen here, pretend to percuss something. It's just very, very helpful when you have a physical object to do it on. So yeah, uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you want to name him. I'm going to reread through the theory over here to see if I missed anything. Mm. So forgot to palpate for lymph nodes and more specifically the supraclavicular lymph node here on the left which is a sign of gastrointestinal cancer, most commonly gastric cancer. So I think now I've done enough OSCE practice for the morning, so I'm gonna switch over to doing past paper questions on my computer. Now usually I go through past paper questions by myself. I have my past medicine on the right-hand side of the screen and my note-taking on the left-hand side of the screen. But recently when preparing for exams, I've been meeting up with either one or two classmates over Zoom and we're going through the questions together. Now the benefit of this is that we explain to each other the reasoning behind how we arrived at the answers for the different questions Questions, and this kind of just forces me to think a little bit more about why I'm choosing what I'm choosing and that thinking process that thought process of recalling those inf pieces of information is really really helpful when it comes to consolidating your knowledge and so that's what I'm gonna do right now I've recruited one of my friends to go through these questions with me so I'm gonna call her on zoom and we're gonna go through them together how's it going yeah good thank you so Georgina welcome to my video <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, I was talking to the camera before and I was saying like you might remember Georgina from like a really old vlog <laughs> I think in like second year or something I, I briefly said hi to everybody in your um, halfway ball video Hi Georgina Abraham! Hi YouTube! Have you clicked start test? Yeah Oh lord, <laughs> alright fair enough Okay, yeah. Have you got an answer? Yeah, I've got an answer. So the Go question is asking, how do we know that this is bulimia, not anorexia? So I think BMI is 25, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's like a core feature of anorexia that's missing in uh, bulimia nervosa. That's BMI less than 18. The calluses on the hands, what are they caused by? The, is it because you're putting your fingers in your mouth? Yeah, you? exactly. So purposefully trying to regurgitate. And you can okay. also get like erosions in the mouth from the acid as well. Oh, okay. erosion of teeth enamel. So sometimes they'll come in complaining of like difficult, like painful eating in the teeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's like another okay. sign. Okay, you ready to move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah, go for it. What are we thinking is the organism here? Well, I'm thinking, well, what, 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 are each, what do each of these organisms cause? So, gram-negative diptococci is gonorrhea, I yep. think. Yeah. The, the symptoms sound like they could cause gonorrhea. Yeah, that's my top choice. What are the, do you know what the others cause? There's a lot of flagellated protozoa, but I think they're thinking of trichomonas there, okay. which causes like a vaginal infection that has like yellowy, dis yellowy green discharge. Like besides that, it's the only reason I'm going for a gram negative diplococci is because I know it's treated with ceftriaxone. But what is the rectal pain? I didn't know you could get rectal pain with gonorrhea. You can get rectal gonorrhea. Oh, okay. So okay, that's I mean, that a possibility. Helps. I think go for it. Are you confident in it? Or is it rectal sickness? Yeah, I'm confident. Should we go for it? Yeah, go for it. Yes. <laughs> I always hear your reaction before your computer shows me the answer. <laughs> I have a disproportionate sense of victory when I get these questions right. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so very solid past paper question session with Georgina. Now it is 1.20, so definitely time for lunch. Nora and I are having this amazing food. It is orzo and beef stefado. Tell me that doesn't look amazing. All right, so that actually needs a bit more time in order to boil off some of that water. So in the meantime, I just received a notification that a very fun package has arrived. So let's go get that. Very big package. I can barely hold this with one hand. Ugh. All right. Now, as much as I want to open up that package, I'm pretty hungry, so I think I'm gonna have lunch first, and then we'll do that. All right, guys, so, food is at the ready. Nora and I have been watching this show called Murder Among the Mormons. It's okay, we're only about one episode in, uh, and that's what we're gonna watch with lunch. Also got some cheeky cheeky Parmesan throw on top, mostly because I'm a cheese monster. Absolutely love eating cheese, not because it particularly goes well with this dish. Nora, do you want some Parmesan? Yeah. He told me on this twice. All right guys, so we're done with food and in classic Nora and I fashion, we're in a post-food coma. So we set a four minute timer on my phone and then scroll TikTok for four minutes. And the timer's there to make sure we don't stay here for hours on end. This guy's hilarious. Okay, I'll send it. All right, timer has rung. That's it, gotta close TikTok real fast. Otherwise, you'll be here for a while. Okay, gonna put the food away and come get you in a sec. All right guys, food is over. I've got my coffee to help deal with the post-food coma. As promised, I'm gonna open up this package over here. Ugh. So, this package was sent by a company called Grove Made in the United States. Full disclosure, this was sent to me for free, but this is not a sponsored video. They haven't paid me to talk about it or say anything about it or anything like that. I just think that they're gonna be very cool and I'm excited to share it with you. So I'm gonna open it on camera. I feel like maybe I should make a PO box and start like a mail time segment on my vlogs. I feel like that would be really fun. Oh my gosh, where do I even start? Okay, nice. This is to put a little a little plant inside of. Oh, nice. So this is an iPad stand. Put my iPad on on the desk. Oh wow, this is a lot larger than I thought it would be. This is a stand for my MacBook. So yeah, I've decided to replace the metal ones on my desk. because so I think these wood ones look a lot better and more professional, more adulty and more mature. This is huge. So this is actually really, really nice. This is something to put by the door uh, as you're about to leave the house. And you can hang your keys down here. They've got these three little hooks inside. And then up here, you can just put everything that's in your pockets as soon as you enter the house. That looks amazing, I'm impressed. Ooh, very, very nice. Mm. Oh, I like that. So this is a pen holder. Super, super aesthetic in my opinion. Matte black with the dark walnut and it just sits on your desk so you always have a pen at hand. Probably my favorite thing. Now I feel like I just need a bigger desk because I feel like I have no space to put them on, on my desk right now. All right, and then this is a desk mat which you roll out and it sort of neatly organizes your keyboard, your mouse and your trackpad so they all kind of know, know where to go on your desk and I think it looks kind of cool. That is a lot of stuff. Nasser, thanks, enjoy your new setup. Cute. Oh my gosh, I've made such a mess. <laughs> Jesus. All right, give me a sec to clean this up. All right, so got a couple of things on the desk, but I think for the remainder of the items, we're gonna have to wait until I get a bigger desk because it is as crowded as can be right now. But I quite like this. It gives a lot of visual, visual spatial organization. Nice. All right, and I'm back at my desk, ready to get some work done. A mighty fine looking desk, if I can say so myself. So what I've been trying to do is meet up with two friends once a day or as much as we can, but around once a day in order to have practical talking, communication, history taking sessions with each other. 
So we've got this online resource with hundreds of different scenarios that might come up in our OSCE exam. And we sort of pick one for each other and then go through it as if it was a real life OSCE exam. And that way we get in the actual talking and physical communication practice in. So the first friend is Georgina, who you saw earlier in this video. And then the second one is Kenji from Kenji Tamita Vlogs. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description down below. He was my very first friend at King's College London. So check out his stuff and support him over there. And that is him right now, inviting me to a Zoom. So let's get started. Let me actually uh, put my background as blurred because I don't want to show you on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's his I think we can just do the same that we've been doing individually, but we'll just have two sets of feedback. Does that work? Sounds good. Sounds good. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Nasser. I'm one of the doctors here at the GP practice. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, could I please confirm your name and your date of birth? Yeah, so I'm Mr. Carter. Uh, my date of birth is uh, 20th February 1990. Okay, thank you very much. I understand that you've come in today uh, for your son, Max? Yeah, that's right. Okay, could you tell me what's been going on? So today I took a collateral history from Mr. Carter, who came in with his one-year-old son, Max. Uh, their chief presenting complaint is that Max has been uh, not gaining weight. He's noticed no changes to Max's uh, feeding or drinking, his urinary habits or opening his bowels. <laughs> What else is your boyfriend uh, saying about it? Like, how is he responding to all this? Well, he's brought me here, so he's obviously not happy. Yeah. Catch you tomorrow, maybe. If not, have a good run. See you later. Thanks, Georgina. Have Peace. a good night. Bye, bye, bye. See ya. Okay, that was long, took a lot of cognitive effort and pretty draining. I'm kind of tired right now, but very, very helpful. This three person system that we have where one person's the doctor, one person's the patient, and one person just listens, takes notes and gives feedback at the end is very, very useful. Find yourself two friends that you trust, that you know will tell you if you've done something wrong or if you had a very bad history taking session or whatever. You need people who, who you can trust who are gonna tell you that you're doing things wrong. Otherwise, there's no point if they just keep telling you, yeah, you're good, you're good, you're good. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I think I'm gonna take a small break and then study for a bit more and then call it a day. So I'll catch up with you guys when I'm sat back at my desk for that. And otherwise, peace. All right, guys, so I'm back. Hasn't been that long. And like I said, I'm feeling a bit tired, not really that motivated to sit down and do a little bit more studying. And so I've tricked myself. I'm gonna reward myself with some coffee and my favorite thing of all time, sour candies. Ooh, that is the good stuff right over there. These are the methods of incentive that I'm using to get myself to do a little bit more work, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. And then I'm gonna call it a day. All right. I think I'm going to call it here. That was a good set of questions. I am happy with that. I think it's been a pretty productive day, honestly. I'm just gonna relax and chill for the rest of the evening, probably edit the upcoming video for next Thursday, and then hopefully play some video games with either my sister or a couple of friends. Chill, have some dinner, watch something. It's gonna be a good night. Very, very soon, I will be moving to a, another city outside of London for my next placement block. So you guys are gonna get another moving vlog and a moving out vlog and a moving in vlog. So yeah, lots of good content coming soon. Lots of vlogs, study with me's, talking head videos, whatever you like, just let me know in a comment down below. All right, and I think that's it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. And if you really wanna help out, you can share this video with any of your friends. And yeah, I think that's it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Trying to do a smooth transition turn and this <laughs> is not working out. All right, see you in a bit. Oh my goodness, it has just shed so much hair all over my desk. All right, buddy. Wow, it's literally like a real animal because I'm out of practice for quite some long. 
Blah, 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 Why can't I say this right? Oh, that's completely fogged up my lens. 